Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to City Sewers. Gideon is here with me today. Hello, baby. Oh, he is getting big. Oh, thank you. He is almost a two-handed dog now. I cannot believe how fast he's growing. Huh, oh, baby? He is 13. Oh, almost, oh, you're growing fast. Almost 14 weeks old. Okay, put you back down. But today is a very special day for our goaty girls. So Betsy and Jane are getting ready to go on a little vacation. They are going to go and hang out at the breeders until they're bred. So what I have done in the past is I will determine when they are in heat and then I drive them to the breeder and they go over and they like spend the night there and then they come home on their bread. The problem with that method is Jane, super obvious with her heat. It's great, it's easy. She's very easy to breed. Betsy has nearly silent heat. It's really hard to tell when she is in heat and we just have not ever been able to get our goats on the right breeding schedule because the one year that I was right with Betsy, we were trying to breed Jane with a different buck and unfortunately he was past his prime and was no longer fertile. So it took many attempts and we finally ended up going with a different buck and she did get bred, but our schedule was way off. So we ended up having babies eight weeks apart. I wanna have them bred on schedule this time so that they can actually have their babies close to the same time, mostly just because I don't have housing to maintain um, basically distancing between litters of babies when there's big age gaps. So it's better for us if we're able to have all of our kidding done all at once and then all the babies can be all together. Let's go take a look at the, the excited travelers, we can call them that. Good morning, ladies. Hey, Betsy. You getting ready to go on a trip? Hey, Jane. You excited to go see all the boys? Now both of these girls are still in milk, so um, our breeder has been very generous in offering to milk them every day for us while they are there. Um, and so they will come home still in milk, but hopefully pregnant. And with the goats, you can actually continue milking them until about two months before they give birth. So they'll continue producing milk for us all the way up until that point. I may dry them up early just for convenience sake, because Christmas time gets a little crazy around here and sometimes it's just easier to dry them up and they get like an extra month of uh, a break to grow babies and not be in milk. So we generally tend to dry them up around Christmas time. But we're very excited to get them bred and I'm actually gonna take an opportunity to get some stuff done while they're not here. So while the goatee girls are gone, I plan on pressure washing this patio back here because uh, they're not going to be making a mess on it and they've also kind of made a mess of the actual house where they like to rub parts of their body so uh, I'm going to power wash that as well just while they're gone get it cleaned up and the other thing I'm going to clean up while they're gone is the goat pen um, it just needs to be done and it's just really hard to do some of these projects when the goats are managing and supervising and so just gonna get that done and it'll be all ready and beautiful and it'll be off my list <laughs> so now we're gonna head out to the breeders house it's about a half hour drive ish from our house and we're gonna drop off the girls out of respect for our breeders' privacy, uh, we do not film on their property. They have asked that we not film on their property. I have asked if we can get a few shots of the buck that we use so you guys can see the daddy of all of our babies. He has sired almost all of our babies. The only babies he has not sired are Jane's very first babies that was before we had the channel. So you guys don't know those babies. But uh, everybody else has been sired by the same dad and he makes beautiful babies with great temperaments. So we're gonna use him again and get our girls pregnant.
even though this looks a little cramped for our goats, this actually works for them to travel because it's not that long of a drive and they actually are pretty calm. It's a little bit hairy getting uh, adjusted so that they're comfortable, but once they adjust, as soon as we get on the road, Jane will, uh, <laughs> Jane will actually lay down and she's very relaxed when she travels. So both of these girls will relax. It's not cruel to be putting them into these close quarters because actually if you have to transport animals together, it's actually better for them to be a little more squeezed because they can't move around and hurt each other. So it's a little cramped getting started, but they will settle down and they will lay down when we are traveling and they fit just fine. Even when they're pregnant and they're getting to be a little wide, we have managed to get them in here. So it's temporary. It's only 20 to 30 minutes and that is totally doable for them. If you need to travel for hours on end, you may need to do separate crates for each goat just because of how long you're traveling, but these guys will be fine. The babies. And they're all adjusted. All right. Well, enjoy your boyfriend time. Yep. So it has now been a couple of days since Betsy and Jane left us for their little breeding vacation. And it turns out I got them in like right in the nick of time because the very next evening after I dropped them off, Betsy went into heat and was bred. So that's exciting. We got one goat down, one goat to go. Uh, and she's, according to my schedule, she's not going to come back into heat for a couple more days still. But while they've been gone, I have been taking advantage of that and I have pressure washed the patio. Come check this out. All right, so I have my handy dandy pressure washer here that I got on Amazon and I pressure washed everything. The screen is like white. Just got everything all cleaned up over here. Got all the cobwebs down. Uh, the concrete is stained, but got everything kind of cleaned out of it. So it's all cleaned up and ready to go for when the goats come back. And it looks really nice. Some of my other getting ready for winter projects include mucking out the goat pen back there uh, and getting that all freshened up, hopefully before the goats come home. And I'm also going to do the chicken coop as well as working on the garden, getting all the summer plants ripped out and putting fall plants in. So I've got a lot on my plate, really crazy busy stuff going on while also overseeing that creature who is currently chewing on something he's not supposed to have. Gideon. Hey, Gideon, are you growing? Hi. <laughs> Gideon is growing like a weed. Both of his ears are standing up right now, but that may not be permanent. The breed standard is for them to have folded ears and his ears just may need to catch up to the rest of him. So we're hoping those will flop back down because they were adorable. But if they stay standing, it's not the end of the world. Oh yes, the life of having children. Why is a broom here in the middle of the lawn? Who knows? But apparently that's where kids need to put it. So on my list for today is getting all of my peppers over here harvested uh, because these plants need to come out. I have kales that need to go in like right now. So the time has come. I've got to actually get them harvested and pulled out. I can't wait any longer for them to ripen. It's just how it goes. So let's get going. So what I'm doing, it may seem a little weird, is the fact that as I'm going, I am ripping off parts of the plant to check it for peppers. Um, since the whole plant is coming out anyway, that's just what I'm doing, rather than trying to dig through the whole plant and find all the peppers. Just pulling off a section of the plant at a time and harvesting, it's just, it's working. So now the bed has been emptied out and we are ready to strip off the, uh, the mulch on the top and amend it and then we can get the kale in. Uh, I just have to get her done. The kale plants have actually been outside 
uh, in their trays for about a week, I think. And so those are ready to go. They're ready to plant right now. So I'm gonna try and get this amended and maybe at least get them placed here, if not planted. We'll kind of see how I'm doing on my time. Hey everybody, it's actually been a little bit of time since I actually started filming this video because we've had some things happen. We've actually had some pretty crazy uh, stuff going on over the past week and a half or so uh, since the goats have been gone. Um, now where I left off on filming I was amending my, um, my hot pepper bed and I did get that all amended uh, and I have not gotten it planted yet. By the time I finished amending the bed we were actually really needing to rush out the door because we had an appointment um, and I also had a meeting that night. I am in the women's ministry leadership uh, at our church and we just finished uh, doing all the stuff. We just did a uh, women's conference at our church over this past weekend and so I was really busy getting ready for that. And between just being busy, we've also had some weather stuff. So we had a day of rain and then the sun came out, but uh, because of some things that my body has messed up. Um, I was in a car wreck two years ago and my back went out. And so I had to take a whole day of, oh, the weather's great, but I can't do anything because I have to rest my back. And so then as soon as the back was better, it rained again for a few days solidly. So that's kind of why I have not picked up the camera because between back pain, weather, and just plain being busy, I haven't been able to do any filming. So. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video and we'll just kind of pick up in our next video. <laughs> Sorry that things are so crazy. It's just October is a crazy month for us. So I'll go ahead and catch you guys up on everything in the next video. So as always, this is your urban nerd with the goat herds and you can grow where you're planted.